and gentlemen, welcome to the Behind the Dice Podcast. That's right, it is episode one, our debut episode here at Behind the Dice. My name is Matt. I am so excited to have you guys here on this wonderful, well, I'm I'm recording this on a Monday. Hopefully this gets out on Monday. Uh, So yeah, here we are. Our first episode, our first podcast here on Behind the Dice. And um, hey guys, before we kind of get started into the topics of today, I would just like to say, as some of you, as some of you know, I am very active on Twitter. Uh, I like to interact with people on Twitter, have some nice conversations about uh, Star Wars Destiny and kind of where things are at, people's opinions. So... I would love if you guys would send me some questions or comments so I could read them on the show in future episodes. Uh, You can mention me in a tweet or you can send me a DM. Either one would be great. So keep that in mind, guys, as we move forward with this podcast. All right, here we go. And it begins. So this podcast is going to be... pretty straightforward. Um, I'm going to be hitting on some introduction stuff, kind of about me, who I am, uh, how I started with Star Wars Destiny, kind of that story. Uh, We will move on to things like uh, the Rivals draft set, why I love it so much, and the recent regional tournament that happened in Rochester, kind of uh, give a little recap on that. But before we get to these subjects, I just want to, I kind of want to make one thing clear. Uh, I kind of want to get this sort of out of the way established now so that everyone knows there's no confusion later so that we're all sort of on the same page here. So basically, I I just want to say that I'm not, you know... I don't consider myself, I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I'm the greatest Star Wars Destiny player ever. Uh, Because I'm not. Um, I like to think that I'm somewhere in the middle. Uh, You know, I beat not-so-great players quite often, but I also lose to very, very good players quite often. You know, as I'm sure a lot of players know in this game, you have your on days, you have your off days. Uh, So, I like to think that I'm somewhere in the middle. So, everything that I say in this podcast now and for future reference is is basically, it's just opinions. Um, You know, I'm not, what I say isn't necessarily fact. Um, If you want to listen to what I have to say, use my opinions, go for it. But this is just kind of... It's kind of a nice way for me to kind of just voice my personal opinions on things Star Wars Destiny. Um, you know, there's a lot of podcasts out there that go through strategy and deck building and things like that, which those are things I will hit, but, you know, I'm just not going to sit here and pretend that I'm a, I guess, elite Star Wars Destiny player. Um but we'll we'll get to my intentions of this podcast and my intentions of this YouTube channel later. Um, let me just extend this real quick. Logic Pro, everybody. Okay, so let's get on to our first official topic here, and that is introductions. I will be introducing myself, kind of how I got into this game, Um, just kind of my viewpoint of it, obviously who I am. So, as I said before, my name is Matt. Uh, I probably got into this game, I probably got into Destiny, I would say somewhere between Awakenings and Spirit of Rebellion. Oh, yeah, so you know the, uh, I don't know if you guys remember the pre-release, the the Spirit of Rebellion pre-release. Around that time is when I started playing Destiny. 
Um, yeah, so I remember it's funny because I am a big Star Wars guy. Star Wars, I, I would be lying if I didn't say that Star Wars didn't completely own me. Like, I will do anything Star Wars, obviously. Not only am I a big Star Wars guy, but I love card games. Uh, when I was younger, I was really into games like Yu-Gi-Oh! And I dabbled in Magic the Gathering a little bit. So, it's only natural that I would start playing a Star Wars uh, CCG. But, how I started playing, it's funny. Um, me and some friends would play Imperial Assault. Um, another Star Wars board game, if you've never heard of it. And so I was kind of into that. I'm like, yeah, it's a board game. It's pretty fun. You know, I, I like it. Um, then I started dabbling in X-Wing a little bit. And then my friend Jack, who is the host of the Golden Dice podcast, if you uh, somehow are listening to me before that, then please go check that podcast out. He's a really smart guy. He knows a lot about the game. Um, he, he actually got me started on Destiny. He kind of, uh, introduced it to me and some buddies of mine. And he said, Hey, there's this cool game out, this cool Star Wars game by the same guys that made Imperial Assault, but instead it's a card game. You can do, it's cards, it's dice. You can do cool things like play upgrades and make your characters more powerful. So I'm like, all right, I'll give this a shot. Why not? You know, it's a new game to learn. It's a card game, so it's right up my alley. So we go to our local game store and pick up the starter deck. The starter decks that were um, out then, which was the Kylo Ren deck and the Ray deck. You know, me not knowing what was good and what wasn't yet. I picked the Kylo Ren deck, even though Ray is probably a better character. Um, and yeah, and we just kind of went from there, you know, I learned the game. Uh, but th again, if you remember th this was around pre-release time, so there weren't really any awakenings boxes or individual packs out there. So it's not like I could just go to the store and buy an Awakenings box and there we go. I'm kind of set up. I can make multiple decks. No, I just kind of had to run with the starter deck and the cards that were available for purchase, individual cards. So that's kind of what I did. Um, kind of built upon that starter deck, ordered uh, my own cards from game stores or websites or whatever. And... Then started making my own decks. Uh, it's funny, like, one of the first decks I made was actually Django Veers. Um, and Django Veers at the time was, I, I guess it was probably one of the top decks out there. I know it's still king of SW Destiny the deck building website or the deck builder, SW deck builder, whatever it's called, you know, where people share their, uh, their deck builds. Um, I know it was, it was, it was kind of up there at the time. And, you know, I just, I like the idea of Django's ability of, you know, being able to roll out when someone else does, uh, almost getting an extra action in a way. Uh, so that was kind of my first deck. Um, obviously, the pre-release happened. I think in the three packs I got, I got like an Obi-Wan. I got a C-3PO. Um, so yeah, that's kind of where I started. And then once, you know, I started playing in tournaments and started playing the game consistently, I'm like, yeah, this is, this is something I can get behind. This is something that I really, really enjoy. Um, and I would love to invest money into in the future. So that's kind of where I am now. Obviously, we go through the incredibly fun times of Spirit of Rebellion, then uh, Empire at War. Now, here we are at Legacies, and which, by the way, Legacies is probably my favorite set, but that's neither here nor there. So that's kind of where I started with Destiny. 
Um, yeah, so that's a little uh, little history lesson about me. So enough about me, actually. Let's get let's let's move on to actual Destiny stuff. Rivals. The first of what I believe many draft sets for for Star Wars Destiny. Um and I just I just want to say actually before here we go. Let's take let's let's wind the clocks back a little bit. Let, let's kind of take a little another history lesson here. And this is going back to Spirit of Rebellion. Uh so a lot of people have a lot of different opinions about that set. Uh, here's mine. Spirit of Rebellion, in my opinion, kind of turned away, made the casual player turn away because of the amount of just obnoxious decks that were being made and a lot of them being really expensive to build. A lot of really expensive decks like like Pomaz. Pomaz was so expensive. Like you, the amount of legendaries and just all the stuff you had to get for, to make that deck work was insane. Then you get the overpowered uh, nines with his insane ability, and then things didn't help when the two-player set came out. So during this time, during this time of Spirit of Rebellion and the two-player set, it's like. I think things were very obnoxious. And this is kind of based on what people have told me. They said it's just it's too it's too much. I can't keep up. All right, I just I just want to have fun, but I'm getting destroyed in two turns by Po Maz or uh FN, whatever FN would go with. FN could go with anything and destroy you. Um so and people stopped playing. Um Friends included, people who I talked to, said, yeah, I mean, around that time, it just, it just wasn't fun anymore. Um, and I can, I can kind of agree with that. Like, there are just times where I'm playing in tournaments and I'm playing against Pomaz and I'm just like, this is ridiculous or, or, uh, FN, and whoever, I'm just getting beat in three turns, and I'm just like, this is like, it, it's the same decks. You know, obviously Awakenings had its fair share of obnoxious decks like Vader Raider and Han Ray, but I feel like it was really, really bad in Spirit of Rebellion. I think that Spirit of Rebellion and the two-player set together not so much not so much a two player set like on its own but when it's paired with like together it really kind of it turned casual players away so let's move back to now i know i'm a little behind on this but rivals comes out that the the um ffg you know Starts starts the destiny drafting style of play, uh, with rivals, and when I first read the news about it before it comes out, I'm just like, yeah, this is a, this is a fine idea. You know, this seems neat. This this, we'll see how this goes. I don't know if it, if it if it will be for me, but we'll see how it goes. Uh. You know, just one set, some decent cards in there. First, neutral characters, which was really cool. I like seeing that. So I'm just like, okay, let's give this a shot. And I get my rival set. And me and Jack and others meet up and we have our drafts. Or a draft, my first draft. And when I played it, I'm just like, this is a blast. I'm going to say right now, Rivals might be the best thing that Star Wars Destiny has done, especially after the Spirit of Rebellion fiasco, post-errata. This might be the best 
decision they've made. Because, in my opinion, where Spirit of Rebellion excluded the casual player because he just couldn't keep up, I think Rivals kind of evens the playing field a little bit. It's all it's all chance. Like, that's kind of the basis of Destiny in general, is that, you know, the game is chance. And it like I said, it, it evens the playing field. Like anyone can get a good card. Or build a good deck through the draft. And it kinda takes it kinda takes the meta out of the game. And everyone can just have good old goofy silly fun like i don't know it, to, to me it just it just brings the casual player back into destiny so another example could be another thing i've heard a lot i actually saw a tweet about this too is that destiny was really fun people really really liked it but they just couldn't keep up financially you know things were always changing there was always updates. There were always new sets. And financially, people just couldn't keep up. The great thing about Rivals is that you, if you're a casual player and you're not planning on playing in tournaments or playing every day with people or getting TTS or something like that, you know you can draft once a month, once every two months. And you, you just buy, you buy your one rival set and then if you have six or eight people, you put in, what, 12 to $15 once a month, once every couple months for a box, and you just have a good old time with friends. I, 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 think, I think that's great. I think that is fantastic for the casual player because it's not taken as seriously as tournament play or you know preparing for tournaments. It's just, it's just having fun with the game. Yeah, Rivals Rivals was a great choice. I can't wait to see what FFG has in store for the future of Destiny Draft. Um, I hope it gets better. I hope they don't make any silly choices with it. It's it was just such a such a great idea. Which by the way, I'm kind of going off script here a little bit. Legacies, I think, is my favorite set. I think I said that earlier. Legacies might be my favorite set. And one thing that I like they did with Rivals is that it goes with the Legacy set so well. It goes with the Legacy set so well. Um, the cards, I think, work very well together. And, I don't know, that's just... That's just really good planning by FFG. And yeah, I, I hope I hope they continue with this trend on making Star Wars Destiny casual player friendly. I don't consider myself a casual player because I play in tournaments as often as I can. But I have many friends who just stopped playing. But now, because of Rivals, they'll play again, even if it's like once a month during a draft. They're playing the game again. And that's just such a great thing. Like, a lot of us get really hung up on how we do at tournaments or how great our deck builds are. But in the end, at its core, Destiny is a game, and games are meant to be fun. You know. I don't want to be that guy that says, oh, the, the serious players make the game not fun because, like, I don't think that at all. Like, I think there's nothing wrong with serious players making great decks for the sake of winning. But you can't take away what this game is at its core, which is a game, and games are meant to be fun. There's a place for serious play. There's a place for casual play. And Rivals leans more towards the casual play. It's just a fun, silly thing to do. Also, depending on how you play the draft, like how we play it is, I don't know if anyone else does this, but how me, Jack, and friends do it is we draft and then we put all the, we do it like a tournament style 
and then we put all the cards that were in packs, the dice cards, out on the table. And after the tournament is over, the winner of the tournament picks first, like a snake draft kind of thing, and takes home these dice cards. So if you're a casual player, not only are you having a good time with the draft, but you're taking home cards too, which is a great thing. Like... At the last draft, we had a couple new players there playing, and they learned how to play the game. And, you know, people like us who have been playing the game for a while that have most of the cards in the set said, you know what, no, you you can just take these cards that we didn't take, that we don't need, and some of them were really good cards, you know. And that just, that gets casual players to have something, you know. They, They have the cards, they can start making decks, whether they're good or not, and they start learning the game, And you hope, okay, maybe then they'll get into tournament play. Rivals is very healthy for the game. Uh, I hope draft stays relevant. I hope they keep putting effort into draft. I hope they make more draft sets. That would be great. I'd buy it. All right, so moving on. Regionals just happened in Rochester. And I just kind of wanted to give sort of a recap of the regional tournament in Rochester. I unfortunately couldn't couldn't go. I had to work that day. Um, but it seemed like a lot of fun. A lot of a lot of big names were there. Discard the re-roll was there. That's always great to see. He's such a good guy. He makes such great content. I highly, if you, I highly doubt you haven't heard of him or listened to his pod. If you're listening to me, I bet you you've heard of Discard the Reroll. So if you haven't, please, please listen to his content. He makes such good stuff. My man Alan Preston was there. Really active on Twitter. Really good guy. I love Alan. And, of course, Jack from Golden Dice Podcast was there. Taking that, what was it, ninth place? Taking that ninth place. Good job, Jack. My boy Brian was there, too. Me and uh, Jack's friend. Good player. So, it seemed like a lot of fun. It's funny because, originally... When I thought I was going to go, we were going to go down to the Maryland Regional Tournament, but because of weather, that was postponed. Um, So it's funny, uh, Jack and Brian decided to go up to Rochester and play in that regional tournament. Uh, So let's see the update here. What was the winning card, the winning deck? Uh, (laughs) Ah, Boba and Seventh Sister. You know what? I'm okay with that. That's that's good. I'm happy R2P2 didn't win. <laughs> I was really pulling for original Epalp to win just because I thought it would be funny if Epalp won the <laughs> won the tournament. But it doesn't shock me that Boba Seventh won. Seventh Sister Seventh Sister is just such a good character. I was kind of expecting either R2P2 or maybe a Tarkin Seventh Sister to win, but Boba Seventh Sister makes sense. That's a lot of dice you can get out. Seventh Sister, that's what's great about Seventh Sister. You can get a lot of dice out on into your pool. And you can just make a lot of things happen with that. So yeah, regionals, it seemed like a lot of fun. Guys, I wish I was able to be there. Unfortunately, I had work obligations to do. But next time, next time, I need to, I, I, I really need to get uh, get to play. And that's kind of, I'll hit this in a little bit, kind of what my plans are with this podcast. But kind of like a sneak preview is, I I feel like this is really going to help me play more consistently. I need to, I haven't been able to go to tournaments in a couple weeks just because of school and work and things were just crazy. I just feel, I just feel like I'm doing a lot of catch up right now. I'm, I feel like I'm just starting to really get to know the legacy set. 
because the legacy set comes out and then, you know, school and work happens and it, it just gets, it just gets crazy. Destiny kind of takes a back seat. But that's why I'm really glad I started this podcast. But anyway, I'll hit on that stuff in a bit. But yeah, regionals um seemed like a lot of fun. Boba and Seventh Sister came out on top. Really good stuff. Really cool stuff. Uh, hopefully, I can get to the next one. Hopefully, I can keep going to tournaments to keep playing. So, yeah. Just wanted to do a little recap of regionals, kind of who was there, what deck won. Oh, by the way, have... What was it? World Championships? Have you guys seen like the uh, like the promo cards that are going to be um, I think it's at World Championships or the World Championships or National or whatever. There's like this really cool uh, Palpatine uh, promo card, promo art card or alternate art, whatever you want to call it. It looks so dope. Like, it looks so dope. Oh, I just... <laughs> I just got a reply from Alan. Sent <laughs> a funny meme. You magnificent bastard, I salute you. Alan, you are a saint. You are such a good guy, Alan. I don't know. I was just kind of scrolling through Twitter and I saw that. So yeah, uh, but no, but the uh, the Palpatine alt card looks so cool. There's some other ones, but the one that really stuck out to me was the Palpatine alternate cards, like him with his like goofy face, spitting out force lightning. Good stuff. So, moving on. That's kind of like. That's kind of the end of like the sort of more direct Star Wars Destiny discussions here. Obviously, as the show goes on in the future, it will be more Destiny focused. But I feel like there's a lot of uh, house cleaning to do here. A lot of introductory stuff, kind of. What is my vision for this YouTube channel? What is my vision for this podcast? Like I said at the beginning of the podcast, I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I am the end-all be-all, that I am a great Destiny player because I'm not. Jack whoops my butt every time I play him. You know, I I feel like I am getting better at the game, though, Um, especially now that I'm more focused on it. So, what is my vision for all of this. Well, that being that being said, I don't know if you were able to see my first couple of videos on my YouTube channel. It's just behind the dice. They're just like they were just like kind of parodies, like a little bit. Like the first one was an unboxing, like a, like a parody unboxing, basically. Um, basically presenting it as like your typical like vlog with like the like the fun, non-copyrighted music that you find on YouTube. Um, And, you know, just, like, I don't know if, like, ripping up a box, just throwing stuff everywhere everywhere will trigger some Destiny players, but, like, I don't know. I just want to have fun, you know? I want to do a little more than just TTS stuff or just podcasts, which is fine. Like, I, I love channels like that. Like, uh, obviously, Golden Dice has some TTS stuff, and his podcasts are great. Um, Double Blanks, obviously, you all know Double Blanks. Um, you ha- They have their TTS stuff. They have their podcasts. But also, they have other things like Let's Plays with, like, Cuphead and, I think, uh, Fortnite. Um, they do other stuff. So, yeah, you know, I'll just make some just... F- you know, silly little videos, like, I don't know, if you find it funny or not, I don't really care, like, I just want to make it to have fun, contribute something different to the Star Wars Destiny community, you know, or at least try my best to, so, yeah, I mean, that's kind of, 
the deal with the YouTube channel. Just just gonna make silly stuff. I'll, maybe I'll make some TTS stuff. Uh, we'll see. We'll see about that. But yeah, I would love to do the podcast weekly. That that's kind of my goal. My goal is to do two videos and a podcast a week. That's my goal. There might be some weeks where it's one video and a podcast or a podcast or just a podcast. Like I would love that do a podcast weekly. Um it's just right now just with scheduling, I'm still trying to feel this whole thing out. When is the best day to record? When is the best day to release? Obviously, I'm recording right now because I'm by myself. It's quiet. I'm able to record right now. So I would love to have some kind of consistent schedule with the podcast and with videos. Um, if you know me already, you know that Behind the Dice is very, very active on Twitter. So I will keep people posted on Twitter about all this stuff. And, and yeah, like, I, th- I think what I'm trying to say is that I, I kind of want this podcast to be just a place where we can sit, we can chat, we can goof around, we can talk about Destiny. Obviously, like I said earlier, I, you know, I'll answer Twitter questions. You know, sometimes we'll dive into meta stuff. Sometimes we'll dive into tournament stuff. We'll dive into news. We'll dive into rumors and the spoilers. Obviously, we'll do stuff like that. But I I just kind of want this to be something where we can just kind of sit and have a chat. And just kind of goof around. You know? I think that would be really, really fun. I don't know about you guys. If you guys have any other ideas, obviously you can tweet me anytime. Um, but yeah, like nothing, nothing too serious, you know, like I'm kind of looking at my time right now. I'm at about a little over 30 minutes of this. Um, once I get kind of more stuff to talk about in future episodes, the episodes might be longer. Um, You know, I would like to make the videos better quality. You know, I'm not afraid to admit I I record them on an iPhone. I'm sure some people can tell. Like I, I, (laughs) you know, nothing, nothing too great. It's just very casual, and I think that's a that's a very good thing. You know. Oh, by the way, this podcast will be on YouTube, obviously. But also, you can find this podcast on SoundCloud. So, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more podcasts. You'll know when the podcast is coming out. Obviously, I'll tweet it out on Twitter also. And also, if you're listening on SoundCloud, be sure to follow me on SoundCloud. That's where you can find the podcast for now, YouTube or SoundCloud. All right. I think we did it. Uh, we're about to hit 35 minutes, I believe. Um, so, yeah, today's podcast is a little shorter. Um, very introductory. Very just casual. Just kind of just want to introduce myself to... The Star Wars Destiny community. Like I said before, I have done nothing relevant in this community at all. Haven't won any tournaments. Like, haven't even... I, Yeah. I've not done anything relevant, so do, say what you want about that. And let me leave you guys with this. If you're a casual player, if you consider yourself a casual player... You don't really go to tournaments. You kind of just play with your friends sometimes. Just just keep this in mind. Even the best players in this game have bad days. That's what happens when you play a game that involves dice. It's all chance. It's odds. 
So just kind of keep working. If you're getting frustrated with this game because of things like that, just keep going for it. That's all I can really say is uh, keep going for it, you know. Keep learning. If you want to become better, just, you know, listen to other listen to podcasts, uh, whether it's mine or Golden Dice or Double Blanks or Tiny Grimes or, you know, or any or anyone. There's tons out there. Jedi Trials. You know, they're great. They're great guys. Oh, and of course, how can I forget... <clears throat> Excuse me. How can I forget Knights of Ren? The Knights of Ren podcast. Listen to those guys too. Just try to get as much information as you can about the podcast. About not about the podcast. <clears throat> Excuse me. About the game. Because this isn't a game that anyone learns overnight. There's always stuff we're learning about this game. Even the players that you know, win tournaments or place in tournaments, they're still learning things about this game as well. This game is always changing. So, I would just say to anyone new or anyone who is getting frustrated with Destiny, stick with it. You know, stick with it. it it's a lot of fun. And get Rivals. Rivals is great. Definitely get Rivals. That was kind of off script. All that. Whatever. Whatever. All right, I think that's uh that's all the topics I have for today. We made it. You know, we made it. Uh obviously this podcast will grow, I think. I think I would love to see it grow in subscribers and followers and views. I just want I want this community to kind of be together. I want people to have good discussion about what we love and that's this game. That's Star Wars Destiny. I would love to have a co-host on the podcast eventually. I'm going to be asking around with friends to see if anyone would be anyone would be interested in co-hosting on this so you're just not listening to my voice. And so that we have another perspective, we have another opinion, someone who can tell me, "Matt, you're an idiot, you're wrong, you'll know what you're talking about." That would be fun. That'd be tons of fun. All right, let's wrap this up. Guys, again, DM me or mention me on Twitter for Twitter questions if you want to be featured in the next Behind the Dice podcast. I will drop your Twitter handle. Get yourself known out there, you know? Make some waves on Twitter. It's a good thing. And... You know, depending on what the question is, I could make that a a whole topic. Like, I'll probably have a section for Twitter questions, but if something really blows me away, I'll probably make it, like, a topic of the show. So, yeah, if you have any Twitter questions, please, 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 please send them to me, and we can talk about it. All right. Guys, thank you so much. We made it. Our first podcast here at Behind the Dice. Very exciting stuff. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, There will be more content to come. More podcasts. More videos, guys. Again, make sure you follow me on Twitter at Behind the Dice. No caps, no spaces. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Again, just Behind the Dice. And make sure you follow me on SoundCloud. That's where audio for this podcast will also be. Guys, thank you so much for listening. I could say some like corny like Star Wars line like, May the Force be with you or something, but I feel like a lot of people do that already. Whatever. So I'll just say goodbye, everybody. Thank you for listening to the Behind the Dice podcast, episode one. I'll see you guys next week. Later! Later!